Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana asubuhi ya leo. I am born again this morning and I love Jesus. As my personal savior. I am once again standing on this platform to welcome you to our online service this day. Um, we are just located behind Kasma Supermarket in Wiki, a temple of worship ministry where we give God now and we are, we, are, we are thankful to God for seeing us through. It has been, we began the year with a word that was powerful and that is working in our lives, that there is, this is our year of expansion without limits. So please, if you are out there, come we experience the grace of God. Last Sunday, it was great for us women. God came down during our ladies' prayer summit. It was awesome. Next time, please don't miss. Uh, on 6th, next month, we will be having a, 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 a health talk for women from 2 to 3. Please, if you have time, just come. Let us learn and know, be a whole round woman and you can stand on your own. And the Lord shall see all the glory. I am grateful that you've been subscribing, been liking, commenting, and sharing this link for our for our YouTube channel. We do not take it for granted and for sure I am grateful. And may the Lord receive all the glory because it belongs to him. Now it is another time that is beautiful before the eyes of God. We want to hear the word of God. A man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word that comes from the mouth of God. So please share this link. Invite someone, be my hasha today, and call your friends as we hear what the Lord has for us today. We have a speaker today, and in a national speaker, I know he has a word for us. So, Karibu Sana, Pastor, our Father, as you are, as you hash, as you share what the Lord has given you, please be ready. God bless you and shalom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, once again, I want to welcome you to this service and I believe that God is going to bless you um, uh, please uh, as, uh, as, uh, as mom has said please uh, subscribe to this channel um, uh, share it with your, with your, with your, with your friends and uh, uh, you can drop a comment to, uh, to, to, to just encourage us and to say what you feel about uh, this program uh, and I believe that the Lord is going to bless you so we're going to go straight to the word of God I want to read a couple of scriptures, uh, five of them, um, but uh, short, short ones, so you don't have to worry so much. And I will start with the first Chronicles chapter number 16, first Chronicles chapter number 16 and verse 15. The Bible says, um, I'm reading from NIV version of the Bible. Uh, let me start from verse 14. The Bible says, uh, he is the Lord our God, his judgment are in all the earth. Remember his covenant forever, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations. Let's go to Psalms, uh, Psalms chapter one, one, 105, Psalms 105. Um, verse number 8. The Bible says he remembers his covenant forever. The word which he commanded for a thousand generations. Then uh, we go to Psalms 111. Psalms 111. Um, verse number 5. The Bible says he has given food to those who fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. Then uh, I will read the final one, which is in the book of Exodus. Go with me to the book of Exodus. Exodus is the second book in the Bible. Exodus chapter 2. I will read verse 23, 24, and verse 25. The Bible says, Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage 
and they cried out and their cry came up to God because of the bondage. And so God had their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God acknowledged them. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for this moment that you have given me to share your word. Lord, I pray that this word is going to bring creative power to the people that are in the verge of giving up. Lord, I know that there are people that are watching this program that are going times they cannot explain. I know there are people that are watching this program that, are, that, are, that have been belittled by, by the situation. There, there are people that are watching this program that are not able even to put food uh, on the table. There are people that are struggling with rent. As they watch this program, there are people that are struggling with their children. There are people that are struggling even to get married or to or to, to marry. And Lord, I want to pray that this word is going to create hope to these people and is going to bring a solution that the word of God gives us. And that is God is a God who keeps covenant with us. I pray that Lord, you use me as a vessel, but let the glory come back to you. In Jesus' name I, I pray. Amen. 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 It's so it's so nice to see every one of you. We want to I want to talk to you about um, the God who keeps covenants. God who keeps covenant to bless his people. And I want you to understand um, the Bible says he he keeps his covenant for a thousand generations. You know a thousand generation is forever and ever because a thousand generation is it's, it's, it's difficult to attain. It's, it's, it's like he keeps his covenant forever. That's what, in short, that was the Bible says. He keeps his covenant forever. And so I want you to understand that God, whatever God has said to you, he keeps it. When God says he will bless you with money, he keeps that covenant. When God says you, he will bless you with a husband, he keeps that covenant. When he says he is going to heal all your diseases, he keeps that covenant. Sometimes we are not patient enough to walk in the will of God. We are not patient enough to walk in the timing of God. And so we want to do, to go by our own timings. And sometimes when people get frustrated because of waiting upon the Lord, they resort to go to a diviner. They resort to go to a witch doctor. They, divide to the, they resort to go to uh, 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 Waombezi. And I want to tell you Waombezi ni, ni wakora wadini. Ni wakora ambao ni wa shetani. Si wakoti watu wa Mungu hao. Usikimbilie kwa watu wanaenda kukuambia wao ni waombezi. Hao ni wachawi. Watakuroga na wataangamiza familia yako. Inafaa uwe uwe chonjo sana. Wewe kama mtoto wa Mungu. Usikimbie tu kwa sababu unasikia kuna mtu anaombeanga watu mahali. Na anaombeanga watu akiwa sijui anawaosha. Na mmoja nilisikia anaosha watu. Unaenda unaosha. Unatolewa nguo unaosha. Na maji. Na hiyo ni maombi. Hiyo ni maombi ya kishetani. Sikimbie huko. Utaingia kwa mambo ambao hauwezi ukatoka. Kwa haraka. Kwa hivyo nataka ujue. Kwa makile mungu ya mesepa. What God has said concerning you. It shall come to pass. Don't give up. Because God keeps his covenant for a thousand generations. Don't grow weary. And his timing is the best. Sometimes he delays his miracle for you for a certain reason. Sometimes he delays his miracle for you because you are not ready. So don't, don't just run out and say, Sijapata mtu wa kunioa, sasa nataka nitafute mtoto kabla sijafika menopause. Unatafuta mtoto wapi? Huyo mtoto unatafuta wapi? Hiyo ni dhambi unaenda kutenda. Na unaenda kutenda hiyo dhambi na bwana ya mtu. Most likely. And I want to tell you the moment you do this, you are putting yourself into a curse. You are putting yourself into an altar of the devil. And the devil is going to keep his covenant to destroy you. So be, be very careful. If your business is not picking, don't run to a witch doctor to see. Atuende wa kangaliliwe. Unaenda kuangaliliwa na nani? Mungu diana kuangaliliwa. Usienda kuangaliliwa na mchawi. Usienda kuangaliliwa na mtu ambaye anatumia guvu za kishetani. Usiende huko. Huko hakuna usalama. Usalama ni wa muda, lakini shida itaingia na ni shida ya kifo. 
So don't go. Believe in God who keeps covenant. He keeps covenant. Your children may not be what you wanted them to become. Yes. But I want to tell you God has a covenant that you are, uh, the fruit of your womb is going to be blessed. What you give for is blessed. And so it may not look like a blessing now. But I want to tell you what you gave birth to is blessed. God is going to bring it to come to pass. Amen. Amen. And so I want you to understand God is a God who keeps uh, a covenant. I, I, I can't talk more about uh, waiting upon God without mentioning uh, the woman called Hannah. Hannah prayed to God. The Bible says in, in the book of Samuel chapter 1, 1 Samuel chapter 1, they used to go to Shiloh to worship the Lord with the, with the husband Elkanah and the, the co-wife Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah did not have children. And so Penina used to ridicule Hannah, used to tell her, but you know, God had told Anna that he is going to make her a great woman, a mother of nations, a mother of a great, great prophet. But you know, Penina used to ridicule her and it used to put her down. And the Bible says Elkanah loved Hannah with all his heart. And when he was giving Penina and his children an offering, he used to give a double portion to Hannah. But the ridicule was still continuing. And so the Bible says they used to go every other year to offer a sacrifice to the altar in Shiloh. This is something I'm going to speak uh, maybe in the near future about the altar of God. You need to offer a sacrifice to the altar that sustains you. You need to offer a sacrifice to that altar that is going to sustain you during a time of difficult. And so she did not give up. She did not say that I got a promise, but God has not fulfilled my promise. She continued to go and to pray to the Lord. The Bible says at the opportune time, God gave Hannah a son, Samuel. So your Samuel is coming. Don't just give up. Continue giving the sacrifice. Continue. Uh, honoring the altar that sustains you. Continue praying to the Lord. And I want to say two things to pray and it is another thing to offer a sacrifice to the Lord. Prayer edifies your inner man. It edifies your spiritual man. But your physical man is sustained by the sacrifice that you offer at the altar. So you need to be very careful. Some of the things that you pray for so much and fast and nothing happens is because we are praying amiss. Sometimes you just need to go and connect yourself to that altar that sustains you. Run to that altar and offer a sacrifice. A sacrifice is not an offering. A sacrifice is not just a giving. A sacrifice is giving that which you love most. Go and offer it there. The money that you love so much, take it and take it to the altar. Connect yourself to that altar because the altar is going to sustain you at the time of difficult but that's not what i wanted to talk about i wanted to talk about god who keeps and remembers our covenant she kept pushing this woman called hannah kept pushing kept pushing kept pushing kept to pray they would go even when they even the the, the, the priest at one time had to rebuke her and tell her stop uh, becoming drunk because she used to pour her heart after giving the offering to the Lord. And she looked like she's drunk. And she told the man of God, it's not so. I want something from the Lord. There's something that I am seeking from the Lord that he talks to me about. And I know it's coming to pass. And God used the prophet. He used the man of God. And she was told, whatever you're praying for, receive it in Jesus' name. And Samuel came into being. Remember Abraham. He was promised a son when he was 75 years. 75 years he was told that you are going to become a father of a great nation. Your children will be like the stars of the sky or the sand of the sea. But he didn't have a child. And he was old in age. He was 75 and the wife uh, 
Sarah was 65. And Abraham believed in the Lord. But the child did not come. Until 25 years later, when Abraham was 99 years, is when the promise came to pass and that Hannah became expectant. Of course, at that time, you know, Hannah was 90. But it came to pass. Isaac was born because of the patience of waiting upon the promises of God. If Abraham gave up at 76, 77, 78, 80, if he gave up, then where would we, would we be ourselves? Because we are descendants of Abraham in terms of faith. We would not be there. We would not be here. We would not have been connected with Jesus Christ. But because he waited upon the Lord for 25 years, we give up too soon. To uh, not give up after two two days. Ah, we pastors and niombea pastors and niombea na kuna kitu na fanyika. A pastor and niombea mimi sioni niki bono. Pastor and niombea mimi sioni niki bado mtu akunyong. Let me tell you, when the word is spoken by God, it shall come to pass. Don't give up on the word of God. The word of God is supreme and it is powerful. Say Amen. That business which has not picked, God says He is going to bless it. Those houses you have built and nobody has entered them. You have spent millions and millions of shillings, but you do not have anybody who is willing to enter those houses to become your tenant. And you are kind of giving up and saying, so what is the purpose of going to church? I want to tell you, the purpose of going to church is to connect with God. And God is going to provide it for you when the time is right. I believe the time is now. And so don't just stay there and give up. Because so many Christians who are good have been strained because of lack of patience to wait upon the Lord. We've not been able to wait on the promises of God. We've not been able to wait on what God says about us. We've not been able to wait even in the ministry, at the ministry level. There are so many ministers that have given up because the ministry has not become what God taught them it will become. But I want to tell you, man of God, woman of God, don't give up. God has said he is going to make you a great woman, a great um, a man of God. Don't just give up. Wait upon him. His timing is just right. Sometimes we can be blessed and we actually backslide because of the blessing. We can be blessed and we go to hell because we're not able to handle the blessing. But let me tell you, when God blesses us, when we are able to handle the blessing, then we move with him and we go to heaven when our time comes. So God knows why. I want you to know that God knows why. He knows why. He has not given you what you have been asking, but he is going to give it to you. He knows why he has not given you a husband. He knows why he has not given you a wife. But let me tell you, it will still come to pass. He knows why he has not given you that promotion that you so much deserved, but it went to somebody else. And you feel like... Uh, as a Christian, you have been let down by God. God will never let you down. I want you to understand that. God never lets us down. He will still come for, He will still come through for you. He is going to make you what He says He is going to make you. He doesn't have to promote you where you are working. He doesn't have to give you the job where you have been wishing to get the job. He doesn't have to give you the ministry where you have been uh, preaching the word of God. Let me tell you, God can still pluck you and take you somewhere else and make you thrive. When he talked to Isaac, the Bible says there was famine. And Isaac wanted to move, but God told him, don't move. I am going to bless you in this land where you are. I will bless you from where you are. And the Bible says Isaac stayed in the land. That's a topic for another day. Isaac stayed in the land and God blessed him a hundredfold. How can you deal with a hundredfold? Whatever salary you are earning, God gives you a hundred times. Whatever stock you have, God gives you a hundred times. Whatever uh, customers you have in your business, God just gives you a hundred for. So stay in the land. Wait upon him. Staying in the land basically means waiting upon the Lord. 
I want to judge somebody. I want to challenge somebody. Somebody who is in the verge of giving up. Somebody who is saying they, they are tired of waiting. Somebody who is feeling like God has not been fair to them. Somebody who is feeling like the hell has broken loose. When, when things are supposed to go this direction, but they are going this direction. Let me tell you something. God is still keeping his covenant. The Bible says he keeps his covenant with us for the thousand generations. So he's going to keep a covenant with you. He's going to keep a covenant with your children. He will keep the covenant with your children's children until a thousand generation. I don't know whether I have somebody back there who can say amen. God is going to bless you. God is going to keep his covenant. God is going to bring things to pass during his timing. Because his timing is always the best. He's going to heal your body in the name of Jesus. He is going to grow your ministry in the name of Jesus. He is going to he is going to give you a beautiful wife in the name of He will give you a husband that is going to nurture you like a baby in the name of Jesus. God is in the process of fulfilling his promises for us. Because his word is here and amen. He doesn't say one and repent. That's what the Bible says. He will not say something and then repent. Why he said that? He will not promise and then he say, oh, that was a mistake. When God promises, his promises must come to pass. In the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter who doesn't believe in your family. Maybe your parents don't even believe what you believe. Maybe even your, 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 your children may not even believe what you believe. Maybe your spouse doesn't believe what you believe. But let me tell you something. Whatever the Lord talks to you, it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. And you say amen. I know uh, 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 there are people there who are saying, Pastor, uh, I have waited for so long. I have waited for this miracle. I have waited for my blessing. I have waited for my healing. I have waited for my profit. I have waited for those customers for so long. Where are they? I want to pray with you. that God is going to make it happen for you in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my viewer this morning in the name of Jesus. And I pray that the word that you spoke to them, the, word, the promise that you made to them, Lord, bring it to come to pass in the name of Jesus. Let them have patience, Lord, I pray. Grow in them faith. As your disciples say, uh, increase their faith. Lord, increase the faith of the people that have been waiting upon you, Lord, that they may not sin in the process of waiting upon you. I pray for that one who is waiting for their healing. Lord, release your healing to them in the name of Jesus. I pray for that one, Lord, that is waiting for their promotion. Lord, I release that promotion in the name of Jesus. I pray for that one that has been waiting, Lord, for uh, 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 to get married. Lord, I, I release that brother to them. I release that sister to them in the name of Jesus. I pray for those that have been waiting for their business to pick. Lord, I pray that you grow their business now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have enough faith to receive from you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, and I bless you because of your faithfulness. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Amen. Well, we are going to be here again next week, same place, same time. And I believe that God is going to continually bless us. Shalom. God bless you. Have a good time.